of Leet Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Um, doing a quick little, kind of quick little uh, review, uh, because I don't have time to do one actually on Monday, because I've got the regular gig. So, um, doing it on a Saturday night. Uh, sorry, Alan, I'm missing the the Twitter jam, band, band, jam, something, whatever, practice today, but I might be there next Sunday. Uh, if not, guys, check it out. Uh, you stream, uh, these hugs for Holly, Twitter jam band. Anyway, I'll, I'll talk about it more this week. Um, so what we're going to do here is a, a wine that I got at Gabriel's. This is the 2006, and it just says 2006 uh, Grenache Syrah uh, on the label. It's a Vignerons de Caractere, uh, Caractere, I guess. Um, that's the label, or that's the producer. And this is a 50% Grenache, 50% Syrah blend. Uh, it's a Vin de Pays from France, which just means it's kind of like, you know, ordinary wine. Um, and it doesn't really tell you where it's from, but I went to the website. I'll put a link to, uh, down below. And uh, this is from the, um, and I got printed out a nice little thing from the website, which I'm pretty impressed for this wine to actually have it. Oh, $4.20. There you go. Shut up, all you stoners. Uh, from Gabriel's, uh, and that was the discounted price for paying cash. All right, so um, anyway, they had tons of this, so I thought I'd try it out. So um, first of all, this is um, this is coming from the Rhone area of France, even though it's not a Cote de Rhone uh, wine. And we'll talk about that in a second. So let's check it out. Yeah, not much really on the nose. A little bit of red fruit, maybe. I'm getting a little earth now. It's really kind of opening up since I'm swirling it. I mean, I opened the bottle up, but, you know, it doesn't really aerate that much, so I really want to aerate this stuff. Yeah, slightly earthy. But nothing, nothing spectacular on the nose. Let's see how it tastes. <laughs> I'm betting testing the new Lip 2.0. Got a few bugs in it. Um, it's tasty. tannin action there, tannin action there, um, mouth is really watering from it, it's not a bad wine, I mean it's a four dollar bottle of wine so it's ordinary table wine pretty much, um, so if you have it, if you, if you can find this stuff for four bucks, go ahead and buy it, but um, the 87 apparently, or sorry, the, the 2007 got an 87 rating from the Wine Spectator. I'll read their tasting notes. This offers nice black cherry tobacco and spice notes with a note of, I have no clue what this is, Garig, defining the finish. Drink now. Well, I agree with the drink now, and this is a year older. Um, I don't know, maybe tobacco? Maybe that's why I fished out of there. Maybe they've actually put tobacco in there. Um, no, it's actually a bit of the cork. Cork won't hurt anybody. Um, I, guess, I guess spice, maybe. Um... A little bit of heat. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe the, the 2007 vintage was better than the 2006. 
But uh, I'll give it maybe like uh, an 83. It's not horrible. And for four bucks, I mean, you know, you can enjoy it. But this is not something that I would say you got to rush out and get. So um, let's talk about um, let's talk about these guys for just a second. So <clears throat> they say that the location of the vineyards uh, are in the villages of Vacare, Sarion, and uh, Bome de Venise. And these areas are kind of in between Chateauneuf de Pop and Jigandas, which uh, in, the, in the northern, well, the, in the Rhone area. So um, it's a vin de pays, which means it doesn't quite meet um, where, where the area says that doesn't mean doesn't meet the Cote de Rhone type of uh, designation. <clears throat> but um, there is a Vacare uh, AOC, but this is also not part of it because they get their they get the grapes from other areas. Um, I said the age of the vines is 25 years. Um, and it says own a group of producers. So this is just a, like a cooperative is really what it is. Um, nothing wrong with cooperatives. I mean, uh, lots of cooperatives make great wine. Uh, and I say this is just kind of a, a regular old wine. It doesn't really seem anything special, at least not, um, at least not this vintage. Let's see. It has uh, small refuse and licorice. I, they, they talk about licorice. I don't really taste any licorice in there. I never I think I've had any licorice in wine. Mm. No, I mean it's not bad. 83 is probably a fair score. It seems like it's tasting a little bit better now because it's it's kind of opening up. But um, it's not like it's gonna be like an 87 point wine. At least not this vintage for me. So um, that's what we're doing this. Uh, we should be resuming sommelier school this week. Sorry, I had to do some uh, some side work for a long time long term client. Uh, video wise, so that's why we didn't have any episodes and we didn't have Sommelier School last week, but uh, hopefully we will have um, uh, more episodes. I have a bunch of wine, I have three bottles uh, that I got, yeah, three bottles that I got to do uh, the Ustream thing, which unfortunately didn't happen this week because my, my regular schedule got in the way. So I uh, hopefully we'll be reviewing those. I think I'm going to do those next week since I have Monday and Tuesday off from the regular gig and I can really devote some time. To research that instead of like trying to do a hey let's just review some wine i want to give those wines some real uh, attention because they are not cheap wines i mean they're not super expensive but they're outside of the normal range of wines that we do and i really appreciate these guys sending them to me we'll do three actual individual episodes of that so we can really highlight those wines um and uh let's see i'm doing pretty good on time so uh other than that um yeah if you find the wine i'd buy it you know, for four bucks, it's not a bad drinking wine, but just realize it's not a uh, showstopper. Uh, there's a big wine thing going on in San Antonio, February 15th, uh, sponsored by KLR, KLRN uh, down at the Almodome. I will be there tasting some wine, so if you are in the area, if you're from San Antonio or the Texas area, um, you'll probably be able to find me because I'll be the guy walking around with the 1337 wine t-shirt that you've seen me wear already. Matter of fact, you can buy one of those things. Um, and, uh, so I've got the swag shop up there, so you can buy one of those things. I know they're a little bit expensive, but when you're talking about these print-on-demand places, it's not like you're going to get these t-shirts for 16 bucks. Um, heck, I, 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 had, when I paid for mine, I paid what the base price was, not the, not what you have to pay when you get the, the 10%, uh, profit. And that's all, that's what I'm doing. I put a 10% profit on it, so you get, like, two bucks off of the sale of a shirt. So I'm not going to get rich of the, off of these things. Um... You should see, you know, new ads. Uh, so the guy that I'm using, they, they update the ads occasionally. So they got some cool stuff on there. Uh, I added some more ads down there. So check it out. Um, and then we'll have uh, Sommelier School Spain uh, this week. And uh, Super Bowl, yeah, I'm really disappointed the Vikings didn't win. But, you know, hey, <coughs> that's the way things go. I'm going for the Saints uh, since they've never even been to the Super Bowl. So this is pretty, pretty, pretty special. I'm Hoping they win. Uh, I might be participating in the Twitter jam band, uh, or at least be there. Uh, they will be on Ustream live after the halftime show. There's a website called theotherhalftimeshow.org, I think it is. I'll put the link down below uh, so you guys can check that out. Um, they're doing this for a charity called Hugs for Holly. Um, Hugs and number four Holly. Um, so, cool organization from what I've seen so far on it. So I might join those guys. Uh, hopefully Alan will have the game on so I can at least watch the game 
and uh, maybe do a little jamming. That's going to be it. We'll see everybody again next time.